I stand as a true servant of the Most High God, the Joshua of this end time, ordained and charged to bring the children of God into the promised city, New Jerusalem. And also as Peter, the rock in this end time, upon which Jesus has built his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I stand to preach the message of righteousness, without which no man can see God. Repent! and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the almighty God in Jesus name Praise the Lord. Brethren, it is by God's grace that we have the privilege to come before God's throne of grace and mercy. As true believers, we owe it a duty to always show gratitude to God for his immeasurable love for us. Heavenly Father, today too, we are most grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brethren, in today's lesson, my aim is to enlighten and caution you on some clandestine that is spearheaded by Satan and his cohorts through their human agents against Christians and Christianity at large. These studies have been with us since the times of old, but in the recent past, these studies have heightened and are trending expeditiously. Satan, in a collective effort with his cohorts and staunch agents on earth, are vigorously punching holes into the word of God and throwing tantrums against Christendom. Some of their major claims are that heaven, hell, and judgment day are non-existent. They say there is no proof to point to heaven and hell. There are sermons have left many Christians in doubt as to whether indeed the dreadful day of the Lord shall come. Thus, they are wondering if certainly there is something like heaven, hell, or judgment day. Brethren in the Lord, why should the pontification of these people parading themselves as men of truth cause you to be broken hearted and leave you in doubt. Brethren, as a true believer, whenever and wherever you hear any pastor or prophet, social commentator, among others, pontificate that there is no heaven, hell, or judgment day, you must give recourse to the word of God. That is the Bible. It is only with it that you can always identify the works of the devil and overcome sin. Brethren, it is lesson 33. The topic is heaven, hell, and judgment day exist. They are no hoax. Beware. Brethren, with the help of the Holy Spirit, let's delve deep into it. Before then, it is crucial to know and understand these scriptures before I take off in full swing. First, the Bible says in the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, the verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And from 2 Timothy chapter 4, the verses 3 to 4. 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the verses 12 to 15. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Also, from the book of Second Peter, chapter 3, the verses 3 to 4. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now from Jude 1, the verses 17 to 19. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Amen. Brethren, Satan through his forces of evil have tested the waters and are fully aware that because of the amorous and shameless attitude of these so-called men of God, most people are levied. With this, they have been able to craftily cast a preliminary sense of doubt in the minds of many, which I say is the prerequisite and fertile ground to believe these false propositions. Thus, if they should bring this doctrine of no heaven, no hell, and no judgment, it shall be greeted with open arms by all and sundry. True to word, many people are hailing proponents of these theories as rather the truthful men and are therefore slamming men of God in general. What some Christians lose sight of is the fact that Satan and his cohorts have deliberately mandated their human agents to exhibit infamous and outrageous deeds to dirty the waters to give Christians a bad press. By this, to a large extent, he has succeeded in luring many believers away from Christendom. God is spirit. No one has ever seen him. Yet, there is no question that he does not exist. That he does not exist. Let's read from the book of John chapter 4, the verse 24. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4, the verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then also, Let's hear what Jesus said from the book of John chapter 6, the verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. 
the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So brethren, Christianity is no physical adventure. It is purely spiritual and it is our belief that makes the difference. Let's read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the verses 1 and 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. Brethren, from the Bible, if a righteous person dies, the spirit of that individual does not go to heaven at that very moment. In lesson 21, I reveal that when a righteous person dies, his or her next destination is paradise. In the same vein, when an unrighteous man dies, his or her spirit next destination is hell. Brethren, in both instances, it is the spirit that is sent to either paradise or hell and not the physical being. So, since time immemorial, all righteous men are in paradise and evil men are in hell. It is worth to mention that paradise is the transit point to heaven, New Jerusalem. This is a place of comfort and delight. Hell, however, is a place of torment prepared exclusively for sinners if they die before the return of Jesus Christ. A transit point to the lake of fire. Let's be more scriptural. I'm reading from the book of Luke chapter 16, the verses 19 to 25. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Amen. Also, from Luke chapter 23, the verses 32 and 39 to 43. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, 
seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. Brethren, the issue of heaven and lake of fire come in after the second coming of Christ. I mean, Jesus shall come a second time to gather his saints to heaven. Sinners shall be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. So, brethren, understand that there is life after death, both for the righteous and the sinner. So, where do you desire? New Jerusalem or Lake of Fire? Brethren, please, let's understand that it is after you are judged by whatever act you did on earth, then you transit to your final destination. Hallelujah. Let's read from the book of Revelation, chapter 20, the verses 12 to 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. The Bible categorically tells us that sinners shall have their final place in the lake of fire. Let's read from the book, from the same book of Revelation, chapter 21, the verses 7 to 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. Brethren, New Jerusalem is the final destination prepared for the righteous. This is the city of God. In this place, God himself will be with us. New Jerusalem is found in heaven, albeit spiritual. Let's read Revelation chapter 21, the verses 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, 
and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Also, First Thessalonians chapter 4, the verses 13 to 18. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Brethren, by the grace of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, having explained the concept of heaven, hell, and judgment day, I must mention that as true believers, we are not in the business of arguing with anyone about what we believe in, but we shall always, and I say always, push for the truth, no matter who stands in our way. Let's read from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, the verses 22 to 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. Brethren, as I mentioned early on, some believers have drifted to follow the bandwagon that there is no heaven, hell, and judgment day. The success of Satan, his demons, and his devout agents to win some believers over by this subject means they have moved away from the truth and have believed another gospel. Let's read from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, the verses 6 to 10. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, 
If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Satan and his hordes of demons know that if you keep your confidence to the end, eternal glory awaits you. Thus, they are doing everything possible to break it down so that you will doubt the scriptures and the Bible. By so doing, you forfeit every good thing from the Lord. Let's read from the book of Hebrews chapter 10, the verses 35 to 39. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Brethren in the Lord, keep faith and confidence in your belief. Remember what I told you in time past, that the deceiver and the deceived are both bound for the lake of fire. Beware. May the Lord help us to hold on to our confidence to the end. Remember, it's extra time of the end time. Watch out!